All right, lads. So, two thousand eighteen, uh, section eight uh, paper. The the short questions. So you'll start to see when we're doing this. So we've done two thousand nineteen already. You'll start to see here though uh, a few kind of patterns emerging in some questions that are are coming up again, um, and we'll work our way through the year. So. Uh, we'll get 16, 15 done and then hopefully by the end of 15 you should be able to answer 10 on your own. We'll do a few more and um, you should be able to, uh, you know, have a good cut off all 15 by the time we finish this section. Alright, so you can see the first page here is nearly the same, the same layout as 2019. So we can see a pattern already. So we have multiple choice, perspective and working out some dimensions. So uh, first question is... Um, quadrilaterals and polygons I can see here so we have an octagon a, trapeze, uh, a trapeze, trapezoid an octagon hexagon parallelogram so first one here we have six sides so that is our hexagon um, parallelogram is where the, the uh, two sets of parallel sides so we've parallel to parallel parallel to parallel Parallelogram, and then this one here is eight sides, so it's an octagon. That leaves us trapezoid. No, uh, so a trapezoid. So anyone, if you could want to leave it in the comments, what what would a uh, what would it be with if that side was parallel to that side? So if it had two parallel sides. What would it be called? So a trapezoid is that one. What would the other one be? Okay. <clears throat> After that, we have this perspective question. So as I said before, lads, in perspective, the vertical lines remain vertical, but the lines that are parallel to the ground um, are either going to be going to vanishing point one or vanishing point two. So you have to keep in your head, even though there's there's kind of lines going at angles, you have to try and work within the parameters we have. And the parameters we have is lines going parallel to the ground or on the ground. And vertical lines, right? So you can see here that they've already shown us um, what's going on. So they can they've shown us the kind of um, the kind of box that's inside them. So same as before, we'll draw the two H lines that we can. So I can see these lines going up along the kind of sloped front of it. Actually, you know what? Let me finish that out first with my two H. And we'll draw two H lines going out. Okay, so there's them lines going out. We need to cut them off. So I can see here there's a, a kind of a, a we've called the glass box inside of. We need to finish that out. So that's kind of the front of it on that side so we need to extend this end out so even though it's high up it's a line parallel to the ground that line there is a line parallel to the ground so we can join it back to the other vanishing point vp1 it's going out there like that until it hits that line out the front so there's the front of the box going out this extends out to hit it and then we can draw a vertical line so i'm going to use one of my lines here to draw it i'll draw my vertical line like that all right, so now I have kind of the front corner of that for there. So remember, line is two points. So there is one point. There is the other point. I have that point there. I have the top corner. There it's going up, and then I know where these lines going across the front of it are. Okay. After that, I need to finish off this rectangle on top. Well, like I said, even though it's high up, that's a line parallel to the ground going out in that direction, so it goes off to VP1. So I'll join it out there like that, my 2H line. Sorry, VP2. And then the other one is already done. There it is going off to VP1. So I'll just finish off that line. How much of it do I need? So it goes onto the corner there. And then I'll finish off this corner here like that. Uh, and I'll draw this in heavy here, this is a light line, so I'll draw in what I need that. Okay, so there's a perspective question. Um, you might be tempted to shade that in there, or shade this in here, 
doesn't ask me to colour or shade, so I won't do it. But uh, that doesn't mean you don't look out for it in other questions, because uh, a lot of people get caught with that, right? So later on, we'll come across that. Okay, uh, the figure shows the outline of a mathematical symbol. Write down the measurement of the angles marked A, B and C. Okay, so uh, A on its own, we can see that it's just a simple triangle. If it's a simple triangle, uh, then the three angles add up to 180. So we've got 50 and, and 80, that's 130 leaving us. That means that for there has to be 50. So then after that, we've got a 180 angle here. We know this now is 50. 50 plus 60 is 110, leaving us 70 degrees down there. We'll put a degree symbol there. Okay, after that, we've got this angle, this angle. No, you can see there that they are not the same angle. So you're probably wondering, um, you might or you might be wondering, uh, how are you going to figure out this angle? Well, if we remember back to first year, we have a thing called corresponding angles. So if I draw a straight line down like that, and I put two parallel lines through it, these two parallel lines are horizontal, so I get a parallel line, parallel line. Well, this angle here is a corresponding angle to this one here. So that means that angle there is the same as that angle there. And we know B is 70, so that means this one is 70. And if that's a straight line, what's left over? 110. So that's going to be equal to B up there, that angle. So that means that C is equal to 110. Yeah, Alright, so I'll drive on. Right lads, sketching question again. So you're just going to have to get used to these. So remember there's a sketching question where you're given these boxes to give you the 30 degree angles to kind of make it uh, isometric and then you've one that you don't. So the elevation and end view of a barbecue are shown in the square grid. Make a freehand pictorial sketch of the barbecue, colour and sh or shade the sketch. Alright. So <clears throat> uh, I can see that... What way of the angle? So you can see in here, there's two of these loops that are the legs. So there's one. So there's one here and one here. So this one must be the outside one. So that there must be the bottom of this leg here. So we'll finish off that loop anyway. And um, remember, we'll do it in two H and we'll uh, draw things in the right position, and then we'll figure out how much of it we need. So got this fully here. So we'll finish that out. So it's uh, gone up one, two, three already. How far up does it go? One. Two, three, four, five, right? So we'll put up the five there. One, two, three, four, five, all right. So there's the top of that. I'm doing this in two heads now, and I'm going to take them all separately like we would uh, if we were doing it in isometric. The width inside there is two across, so it goes up two. It's up to that height there. That's a corresponding height with it. Okay, and then that's the inside of it there. So one is standing there like that. You don't have to finish off these squares on top actually because they'll be covered afterwards. But no, I'm for sure to. All right, then this one is the exact same thing except there are one, two, three, four, five apart. So I go one, two, three, four, five, and then we have this other one here. So I'm going to draw a two page line across there like that. And then I'm going to draw this for now. Same position up here. So it's one, two, three, four wide. One, two, three, four wide here. Then we go up the same height. It was five in height. Or I can just use that line there. Okay. And we have one inside there. One up from the bottom. And one away from that side. Okay, so we have this one in there like that. Right, so there are the kind of two legs of it. Then after that, I can see on this side, if we put this kind of cuboid up on top of the two legs, so uh, it is sitting, the thickness of it is one off the ground, so it's sitting one up off the ground like that. It goes all the way down here, and then it sticks one, two out the end. One, two, like that. So there it is, sticking out the end. 
and it is one, two, three, four wide. Three, four. So remember now, lads, you're doing this light with a pencil, with a two-edge pencil. Okay, it goes all the way up, and there is the kind of uh, rectangle sitting on top of the two of them uh, plinths there. You can draw the back one there, it won't be seen, but if you, if you want, I'll show it to you there. Look. All right, then on top of that, there's this kind of the hood of the barbecue. So the hood of the barbecue is directly up from the end of this leg. So it's going to be, I'm going to go straight up to the top of the table and draw that across there like that. There we are, like that. Okay, the back of it goes up one, two. So there's the two going up. Then it goes in one, two. One, two, like that. And then it slopes down to meet the front there, like that. There is there, like that. Alright, then we do the same on the other side. So that goes all the way to the end. So it's flush at the back corner. Same thing, up one, two. Then in one two, then it comes down to me at the front of this table here, and there we have that little thing on top. No, I've done that all lately with two H, so I'm gonna figure out what I need now. So uh, this front table, I'll be able to see all of that. The kind of table part on top, I'll be able to see all the front of that. I'll be able to see all of this side of it. Yeah. Then it comes into here until it meets the hood. Hood is going down like that. I'd see all of the hood. I'd see all of this line. All of this line. So there's the hood on top. Now I've all the legs drawn in my two H, but I how much of it do I need? Actually, I might have made a boo boo there. I shouldn't have drawn them lines there. Um, you'll be able to rub it out. Unfortunately, I won't. So, um, that shouldn't be in there at all. You can see here, it comes right up there, flush to meet it. So, that's a boo boo there from the deck. Alright. Okay. There's the inside light goes all the way up till it hides behind the um, top of that. Now I'm missing one bit. Can you see it? This inside part here. So the inside part of that there, light there needs to be shown as well. All right. Now there we have our um, bit of a barbecue and I get my shading pencil. <coughs> Okay, remember what I said about light? So I'd say that the light is shining down there like that, in on this side. So that means this part is going to be dark. Uh, this side here is going to be dark. This side of the barbecue is going to be dark. Like that. Right, it's shining down like that. This is going to be light if it's shining straight down top but so this bit will be slightly darker slightly only this will be a bit darker because that's that's at an angle facing up towards the sun this bit here will be darker than that so all these bits here right these inside parts of the legs that side will be dark because it sees no sun at all then this bit does see a bit, so not too bad. This fellow will see a bit as well, but not as not as dark then. I got to tone all together on the darkness here. My shading's in a small bit. Small bit. Alright, so we're not too bad there. So you can see a uh, bit of shading put in and I'm thinking about what way light is hitting it. You get used to that. Alright. Okay, after that, lads, uh, 
Question five. This is an areas question when we haven't uh, we haven't this wasn't in 2019. So surface area of road marking similar to that shown in the 3D graphic is specified by law. The figure shows the triangle outline ABC of a directional road marking. So you can see it here. Convert that triangle ABC into a rectangle of equal area. Now this is um I can show you and I'll explain it to you and it actually makes sense so you know from maths what's the area of a triangle, how do you work out the area of a triangle, how do you work out the area of a rectangle. Well the area of a triangle is either half the base by the perpendicular height or half the perpendicular height by the base. So and the, the area of a rectangle is uh, one side by the other. Okay so if I draw I just represent that for perpendicular height. So the perpendicular height is important. So I get a perpendicular line going from the base all up to B. That gives me the altitude of my triangle. Okay, so there it is going up to B. So if I find halfway in that, so half the perpendicular height. Okay, so half perpendicular height, there's my bisector. Put that through like that. So there's half the perpendicular height. Draw the bisector right through. Okay. So um if I have a triangle, if I get half the perpendicular height. And I make a rectangle using that line. So I'll keep the same base, but I'll half the perpendicular height. And make a rectangle out of that. That rectangle is equal to uh, is equal to the area of that triangle. So I'm trying to work out a sum that if, if I said that perpendicular height was eight, okay. So let's say that distance there was eight, okay. And the side here, um, that perpendicular height was eight, and the base was eight, okay. So it was eight by eight. So eight would be the perpendicular height, 8 is the base. Well if I was trying to work out the area of that triangle, I'd go half the base by the perpendicular height or the other way around, that would give me 4 multiplied by 8, that would give me 32 units squared. Alright, that would be my perp that would be my area for the for the um the triangle. And what am I after doing here? I'm after making that perpendicular height down to 4. So now the side of this is 4, the base of it is 8, 4 by 8 equals 32, it's the same area, alright, so half the perpendicular height to get that, there is one other way to do it, I could half the base, so if I use the same perpendicular height and just went to half the base and use that as the rectangle, it's the same thing, it gives me the same answer, alright, okay, next question, we saw this in the previous one with a stapler, um, the figure shows the an elevation of a gavel and block as used by a judge in court, uh, the also shown as a 3D graphic of the gavel and block. Rotate the gavel A, B, C, D about point O until it reaches the top surface L, L, L1 of the block. Alright, so same as before, we said this is a rotations question. I have my point of rotation, I don't have the angle of rotation. What they've told me, they told me that once uh, point O. Rotate the gavel ABC. So once that hits this thing here, um, then that is the uh, that is where it stops. So I can see here. Look by rotating it, what what point is going to hit that that gavel first, or what point is going to hit the the surface of the black first? It's going to be point D. So if I rotate, take point of my ro point of rotation, and I rotate D down like that. There's E hopping off this. 
and I'll rotate all remember all points go around the same point of rotation so I'll rotate all my points there's A there's B and far off A and C is isn't far off D nearly on the same line of rotation maybe that was intentional okay so you can see that when I rotate that what point that point D is going to hit it first all right so that means that there is D1 so same as last time lads um it's a it's a new the the this rectangle is going to be in a new position but the size of it nothing of that changes all right so if that's D1 and the distance from D to A is that distance well the distance from D to A1 is going to be the same distance all right so there's D1 there I rotate it through like that and I get this point here okay D to C or C to D is not going to change so there's D to C and B to C is not going to change so that and there, that and there, like that. Right. There we go. Now, you can see here, not overly happy with that to be honest. You know, you're, it's very fine margins there. I actually might just double check that by going from D to B. Just give me another mark there. Look, yeah, you can, that's a more accurate one because it's crossing right through it. And I can see there, there's B. All right, I'm going to use that one. That one is going to be more accurate when you're kind of rotating through when the when the two arcs are nearly meeting each other. It's not great. You want to be kind of cutting through it. So I'm going to use this one instead. So I'm going to use that as B one. I partly guess that was going to be small but out. And I'm going to do the same from C to A. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna do the same from C to A. Yeah, C to A. So this is C one. I'm gonna cut that through there, and I can see. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna use that as A one. All right, and we've C one. So I'll just use diagonal diagonal uh, markings just to make sure it's correct. Um. All right. Okay, so there's A to D, there's C to B, there's that, not, not too bad there, so there's my new, uh, my new rectangle, and then just to finish it off, that the, the handle of it is there, I just get the distance from C along to D where the, the handle starts. There it is there. And I'll just mark that off on my at the bottom of my new rectangle. So if that's the start of the gavel, the only point that stays the same in a rotation is that to O. So there is the handle. There like that. Alright, so there we go. Do I need to shade it? I don't. So I'll take that off. Okay, turn this one around. Okay, that's just an auxiliary elevation question. So, this is, uh, let's say you would have found this reasonably tough, but all you have to think, like I said the last time, is what I'm doing is I'm keeping the same plan, but I'm getting a different elevation. So, all the rules apply. All I'm using now is the old elevation. I'm using that for information. I'm not actually... Um, I'm only getting a few pieces of information and what I'm doing is it's like someone said there's the plan draw the elevation and actually sometimes uh, if I'm doing it with, with fifth years um, this question what I'll actually get them to do is I'll get them to take off the sheet and I'll actually get them to turn it around so that their t-square is level with that and I'll tell them forget about this this is your plan and elevation I actually do that with them at the very start so uh, here is our here so uh, if that's my plan that's my my new elevation is going up here 
when I'm going to go at 90 degrees to my XY line or my X1, Y1 as it's now called and I'm going to draw all them points through it in 2H just to kick off. Any kind of corner I see it all I'm taking up. Right, I have a bring there. Okay, so I've all my lines taken up at two H. As normal, the plan going to the elevation is ninety degrees through the XY line. What piece of information do I want from the current elevation? Well I want the heights, don't I? So what I'll do is and you can't just, if I want to take the heights, you can't just go like that, lads, because like, that mightn't be the perpendicular height. You might, you, how do you know that, uh, that that's going directly up to that? So what I'll do is I'll get it on a perpendicular line. So there are one, two, three heights. So do you know what I'll do? I'll go parallel to this XY line, and I'll bring them all onto this vertical line out here to get all my heights. Okay, so I'll get H1, H2, H3. Okay. So I'll mark them off from one of the lines there and I'll draw it straight through. So there's H1. There's H2. There's H3. So remember, no matter what way I look at this from the ground, the heights of these will never change. Same rule as your when we're rotating for true shape. Like no matter what way it turns, it's still the same height off the ground, so I can use all these heights. So I have H1, H2, H3. Right, so it's electron that we're doing. So... Like there's no there's no two ways about it, lads. You have to try and imagine what way you're going to see this thing. You have to like look at this plan and say, right, if I'm standing, so this is the new direction I'm looking in, if I'm standing there, what exactly will I be able to see? So they've said in the question, uh, project an auxiliary elevation of the electron of the line X1, Y1 to show the true shape of surfaces. So what they're saying is, when I look straight in at that, I'm going to see the true shape there of that surface, which is called S, all right? So, I, I'm actually, uh, they've, they've, they've gone and said, if you draw that there, you'll get a true shape of the surface S. So, maybe the best thing to do is start off with surface S. So, we'll take these height lines across, and then all we do is just get points on it. So, we have all the vertical lines, and then we'll take all these height lines going across. So there's a height line going across. So for surface S, this line here is surface S. Surface S goes from the ground, this outside part there, here it is here, there it is up in the old elevation, it went up to H2. So that goes up as far as H2. Then after that, this side, it goes up at an angle, up at an angle, up to H3. There's the top of H3, there's the point there. Um, in the plan, so it's going all the way up to H3. Of course, I didn't draw this far enough. So I just have to extend that line up a small bit. There it is, going up to where is H3? There's up at H3. So now there is. There is my surface S. Right? If you imagine me standing at the side of that electron, well, the first surface that's going to hit me as a true shape is surface S there. Alright? Now after that we'll figure out what else we need. So if I'm standing here, this is me standing here looking at that. I'm looking straight in at that. Can I see the outside of that? 
well you can see if I'm standing there I'll see this little bit of it here right this kind of rectangle part here and that is just a straight line there it is the outside part there it's just a straight line going across um, I'll see kind of a slight bit of this tall rectangle here at the outside so we'll draw that in okay after that what else this line inside here I won't be able to see that like that's if I'm standing in front of that I won't be able to see that so it's standing inside so this line here sorry I'm able to see that surface there I'm able to see that surface there this back line here I won't be able to see I'll do it in a second this bit here I will be able to see this front bit this kind of square at the front this bit here this bit here I will be able to see so that uh, kind of square or rectangle on the front there it goes from H2 to H1 so there's a line here going from H2 up to H1 it's on this side here it's off the ground or sorry from H1 to H2 sorry H1 to H2 so there it is there off the ground there is me looking at it there like that all right so there's that side okay so I've I think, as far as I know, look, if I'm standing there, I think that's all I'll be able to see. If you imagine me standing there, I'll be able to see this, this, and this. That doesn't mean the other stuff isn't there, lads. There are lines and there are shapes there that I do need to um, show to get full marks. So I'll start with this back line here, the one that's going down here like that. This back line here. So that is there. What is the story with that? Well, I can see there it's, going, it's a line going from the ground up to H2. And even though I can't see it, I'm still drawn in. I'll draw that at line one, all the way up to H2. Okay, after that, it goes a straight line across to the front here. There it is going across there. So it's this line here it hits, and I can't see it. So I'll draw it in that line. Grand. As well as that, there's this line going up the back here, going from that point up to that point. I can't see that. Doesn't mean it's not there. It's going from there up to that, the top of that. Uh, top corner of that back rectangle so there it is there all right so now i've drawn the bits i can see and the hidden detail and is that it uh, it is not this there's a line going across the front there there's also a line going across the bottom there like that so there's a line going across here there's one on top and there's one on the bottom that goes all the way across there all the way across Till it hits the front of it out here. So do what I do with that. So I'll have to draw that in. So there's a line going up there at the back, and it's just outside of that. So this line here, this front corner here, is going up like that. Oh, good enough now. There it is there. And there's going to be a line underneath here, look. Underneath there like that. I need to draw that in. And that line is going from there over to there at a height of H1. It's going from there over to there. So there's a dotted line in there as well. Tough enough for now, that's tough enough. Alright, so that's how much I'd see of that. Okay, so that's the auxiliary elevation question. We might do a bit more on that next year, but... Um, have a cut off that let's okay uh, next one is another sketching question so uh, elevation and plan of a date stamp are shown in the space provided draw a freehand pictorial sketch of the set stamp color or shade to complete its sketch all right so we'll just build it up from the bottom so remember lads you have to you have to draw these 30 degree angles so sketch it out as close as you can 30 degrees Get used to drawing them 30 degrees. And we'll draw our crow's foot here like that. I won't draw it too high because so I'm only starting with this block at the bottom. Okay, so I have to go that distance along. So I'm going to put the long side on this side. That's about that distance. Uh, let's say about there like that would be fine. Height of it is that. Uh, up to there. Something like that. And there is the front. Maybe a little bit higher. Front there. So I'm doing 2H now. Then it goes back that much, so I'm talking about that distance, about there or something like that. 
have to combine when I finish off my cube wide that that's in. Something like that. Okay. In the centre of that, so I have to find halfway is about there. So I've got a circle. And I can see that that circle, even though it's touching both sides there, if you forget about that, that inside circle is the one I'm looking for. So I'll draw a little crosshairs on it. Then I'll have to come in that distance and that distance from the side. So it's going to be in there like that. Now if you want a handy way to draw, to give yourself a guide for a circle, you remember if I'm looking at it this way, it's going to be an ellipse. But <clears throat> if that's a circle inside there, even though it's tilted at an angle, the distance from there to there, there to there, there to there, and there to there are all going to be the same. Because that's the centre, even though I'm looking at an angle. So I give myself a little mark there, and a little mark there, that's all about the same. And I draw my little circle in there like that. So we're talking something like that. Okay. So I'll come to the, f the generator on the far outside of it. And I'll go straight up. And then I have to figure out how I'm going to go. It's about that height. So I'm going to use this front here. So we're talking... Uh, Talking that height up. So there, we're talking about that height up there, like that, maybe. Something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the same circle in there, like that. Or the same ellipse. At that angle. Alright, so I'm going to repeat the same thing, because if that's a cylinder, that circle there, that circle there are the same, so that ellipse and that ellipse are going to be the same. After that, <clears throat> I've got this going up here, so I'm going to find that there's the centre of it there, going up that distance there, right, to get the top, so this is a truncated cone, it doesn't mean the top of that isn't a bigger circle, so I'm going to have to go up that distance, the same as that, I'm going to go up that distance there, and that's the centre of my new circle, I go 30 degrees, I go 30 degrees. And the same method I used down here, same distance, same distance, same distance, same distance. I'm going to go the same distance, but it obviously has to be more than that, because this top circle is going to be bigger. So I'm going to go, uh, if you wanted it, you could take that all the way out to the edge, because it is flush with that. And bring that edge all the way up to the top, if you wanted to be very good about it and not do it by eye. So you're talking like that. Or you can just say, right, it's going to be that distance. Measure it out here, out here, out here. Here, and there's my top circle there, like that, something like that. Okay, if it's a cone, it's joining onto the outside of that, joining onto the outside of that. Right, once I've that done, <coughs> I can figure out how much of it I can see. So I'll be able to see the room at the bottom of that. That goes up along here. There, right, the outside of this, this, I'll be able to see the whole lot of that circle on top. This line will go around the back, and then I'll be able to see a little bit of it out here. Across the front, remember that's not flush with the edge that is in a little bit. There we go. Not bad. Might be a little bit thick here on top, but you should be close enough to full marks with that. Okay, um, so I'm going to do, I'll do it in two different colours. Uh, I'll go, I like blue here. I like it. I have blue and green. Right, so I can colour or shade, I'll do colour for this. So if we think about the light hitting it, so We'll say the light is hitting it here at the front. So the back of that, think about the generators. They're going from the circle in the bottom to the apex of this cone if it was there. So I'm going to colour along the generators. So we've dark, dark, going all the way out to that generator. And then as it starts, the generators start to hit the light, they start to get a little bit lighter. So the back of it's going to be light. It's going to be the same with this cylinder in the front. You will have dark generators at the back. So them lines there are going to be 
dark, dark, and as they come around to the front and start hitting the sun or the light, they'll start to get lighter like that. And maybe start to get maybe darker again as they go around. Alright. Um we'll make the, the black here at the bottom dark as well. So if the light is going that way, this side but it's gonna be dark, so I'm leaning really heavy on this side. This is gonna be the darkest of probably anything on it. Actually sorry, let me just shade that for mine. Okay, this this bit here is probably gonna get the most light of these three sides because the light is probably shining down top of it there. So I'm gonna go a bit, a bit lighter with that. Something like that. And then this is gonna be somewhere in between the two of them. Here like that. And that should be the same as this full up the top because they're both surfaces lying flat like that. So you'll end up with something like that. That you're probably talking full marks there. And I did say uh, that if you wanted to along the outside, imagine you're shining a flashlight from the back. If you want to go around all the outside, just one dark line. So if there's a flashlight from the back, all the edges that would hit. So if there's a flashlight at the back that I couldn't see, where would the light be kind of shining out be all these edges here? Okay, just makes it stand out as well. There's a sketch, lads. Right, next one. Uh, we saw this in the last uh, the last paper as well. So we've three, uh, we've four AutoCAD commands. You have to name three of them. One of them, the one actually is, or sorry, two of them we haven't seen in the previous one. The other two are similar. So maybe you'll be able to spot that. So they're saying, what happened between there and there? Well, if you draw a shape in AutoCAD or CAD, if you draw a shape, the thing you've drawn is the name of the command. So what have I drawn there? It's an ellipse. That command is called ellipse. So fairly straightforward. Um, if I want to put, what do you think D stands for? If I want to put, uh, what would I be putting on that measurement there on the minor axis of it? It's a dimension. So any time I put a dimension on it, the tool is called, or the command is called dimension. All right, you remember this from yesterday, or the, the last um, exam paper. So if I come in the same distance, along a shape to make another shape inside and it's the same distance from all the other one it's called an offset and remember i was on about the kind of if i use that shape and project make it so remember i'm making it into a 3d shape from a 2d shape if i use that shape and just come out the same thickness along all of them remember i was on about that play-doh thing if that was kind of the mouth of the play-doh yoke and i started squeezing the play-doh through it the shape, the, the direction, if it all comes out together, all comes straight out like that. Every part of it is coming straight out the same distance. That's called extruding. All right, so that's an extrude. So you can use any one of them. Okay, so any three of them will do you. So you probably should have copped the two of them. You might have been sharp for two of them, but you probably would have guessed one of them anyway. Okay, that's nine. And there's ten. Here we have 10. Alright, so 10 is appears to be a solids in contact. So show, shown is the outline, elevation, and incomplete plan of, of an angry board character in contact with a sloping block. A 3D graphic is shown. Uh, draw the plan, so this is 2018, obviously they were popular then. Um, a 3D graphic is also shown. Draw the plan of the sphere and locate the point of contact between the sphere and the back. Jesus. Sorry there. That's coming down. Right.
Right, sorry about that. Okay, uh, so uh, draw the plan of sphere and locate the point of contact between the sphere and the block. Right, so uh, we'll deal with up here first. So the point of contact between that and this block here uh, is going to be a perpendicular line. If you imagine, if that was turned around, if that was a wheel and that was the ground, you be talking about a perpendicular line going from the ground up to the centre of the circle. So nothing will change, even though it's turned sideways. That rule still applies. So right. So I get that angle there, I take my 90 degree on top, and slide that over. Go through the centre of the circle. And there I have my point of contact, P O C. So I draw my normal. That's going perpendicular to tangent through the point through the um, point of contact. So there is. I draw my normal uh, through the point of contact and through the center of the circle. So there's my P O C point of contact. Right. So I can project down what I need from my plan. So I'll give myself a horizontal line, and they're what they want me to show point of contact in plan and elevation so. right. so I project down the centre of that sphere if it's a sphere in elevation it's sphere in plan and I'll project down my point of contact ok so this sphere is obviously going to be hiding some of that, but if I'm looking, imagine looking at that from above, of course I'll be able to see all of that, all of that uh, sphere in plan. So I can take my H pencil or heavy on my compass and I can draw the full lot of that, whole lot. Right, so there's the amount of the sphere I'll need. Uh, which leads me on to draw the rest of the working lines. So I'm going to see this much of the black. Yeah, like that. And see all of this bit up the side. All of that there. And this bit here, I won't be able to see. It's going to be a dotted line. And it's going to be dotted in there, so I'll just leave a bit of a corner just to show them that it's not, uh, not going all the way in. Right, so I have my dotted line there. Am I finished? No, I'm not. I have to show my point of contact. If you imagine that ball is sitting in there, that ball is sitting against that edge there. Well, the point of contact is going to be somewhere, somewhere in there. It's going to be right in the middle here, like that. That's where the point of contact. That's where the the, the ball is going to touch it. And I do need to show that. All right. So there's the plan of the point of contact. Job done. Okay. Next one. I need a bit of paper for this. Use this one here. Right, so figure one shows the logo for a telephone company. 
The curve ABC is based on a semi ellipse. Figure 2 shows the location of the axis and focal point of the semi ellipse. The point P is a point on the curve. Alright, so you remember that graphic I showed you, lads, of remember I was on about the carpenter drawing an ellipse on the table. So this is this situation. So I don't know, I know neither the size of the um, major axis or I don't know the size of the minor axis. All I've given is two focal points. So you remember, what do I need to do? If I have the two focal points and a point, I have to draw in the bit of string that I would be using to draw what that carpenter would be using to draw that ellipse. There, like that. And what size is the total size of that bit of string? Remember I was saying he draws it around like that. The total size of that bit of string is the whole major axis. So if I extend this full out, like so, and add on F1 to P to F2 to P, well the total length of that there, that length there is my major axis. And what am I interested in? I'm interested in half the major axis. So I go more than halfway, swing an arc, swing an arc, same the other side. Swing arc, swing arc. Then draw my bisector. Do there like that. So that distance there is half the major axis. So now we're talking. So I'll draw that in there. I'll swing it from this side. That's half the major. That's half the major. I'm sorry. But I'll draw in full major axis now so I'll extend the both both sides to get the full major axis there like that. Alright and I'm actually gonna extend this guy up up and down because I might need it. So I'll extend up the major or the minor and I have the full major. So you know So we'll use our trammel method that we've learned to, to finish this off. So I'll know that what won the prize for the longest axis or longest half of an axis, the major axis won it. So it's C, sorry, there's the center, C, I'll do it the other side, sorry. So C for the center and then 1 for the longest half axis major axis. Very good. So one always stays in the minor point on the major axis or sorry the minor axis. C always stays in the point. So that means to draw that I would have had to go like one on the I'll label that. I used to do that. One and two. So one always stays in the minor axis. C is a point. So that is what would I would have had to do to draw C like that and if that's what I would have had to do to draw the point well that means that that is 2 so C to 2 so C to 2 is the minor axis so I can mark that off there like that and now I have my minor axis now I'm away so I can start drawing the rest of these points now. So one staying on the minor axis, two is staying on the major axis. And off we go. Right. Point. One, two, point. One, two. Point. One, two, point. I have the one there on top. One, two, point. I have P already, so I'll leave that there. C point one two point. I'm gonna give myself one here, I don't need it, so I'll just uh, write something like that. So I get my points going around like that. Remember you you can do that light light hairy line, even though I don't like them. As light as you possibly can. 
Go all the way around like that. Just to give yourself a bit of a guide. And then you're going to take your H pencil and draw one proper line around. Like that. Okay, now you've the hard part done, you just have to finish it off. So I have the two ends of this. So there it is. One there, there's that one side there. And I need to finish off that rectangle. These two small rectangles are going to be flush up there. Give myself two vertical lines to do it. So I'll use these ones there on the bottom. I'll draw a vertical line like that. Same over here, a vertical line like that. And I'll extend out these to meet it. Goes up to there. That goes up to there. Same on the other side. There. And there. Okay. Do I need to shade or anything? No, I don't. It's sound as it is. Right, grand. Perfect. Graphic Law shows three stacking puzzles. The plan of each puzzle is shown on the right. Match the correct letter with the appropriate puzzle below. So, A. Um, so, A is going to be... There's one full circle with two uh, hidden ones inside it. So, that doesn't count, that doesn't count. Three has to be A, doesn't it? So that the two hidden circles are inside it. B. Um, should have given this with the colours really, haven't I? So B has, um, you can see one full circle. You can see another one outside and there's a hidden one inside. So that has to be one, doesn't it? So they're, they've even given the colour look. So it's the white circle is going to be inside there. So one is B. And you can, two is going to be C. You see, you can see the white, bit of the grey, bit of the darker grey. Yeah, that's money for them there, that's, but that's grand. <coughs> okay. Last one. Last three questions. Okay, right, the graphic shows the design of a door mirror for a car. The centres of the arcs are shown, show clearly all points of contact. Right, lads, well, we know that point of contact between two circles is, how do we get them? Two circles are touching, how do we get the points of contact? We get them by joining the centre. So if that's the centre of that circle and there is that circle, well, the point of contact between the two of them is if I join the two centres and where it crosses through both. There. Same on this one, if that's that big circle, that's that small one. Join the two centres. There we go, like that. So I'm going to start marking this in. So there is the POC between the two of them. There's the POC between the two of them. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, this circle here is touching this line here at the bottom. Well, like we did with the ang Angry Birds question, if a circle is touching off a line, well, I need to go perpendicular from the line through the centre to give my, po give my point of contact. So I'll try. I'll do a bit of hoofing here now. So I don't know if it is fully horizontal. I won't take any chances. I'll just slide that down. So this is going to be parallel to that, so that I can use this, draw through the center, like that. So there's my normal to the tangent, so there is my point of contact. Right, after that, what's going on here? Well that is the center of this big circle here, see the big arc there? So. There's a big circle, so if I was to kind of sketch them in, you've kind of two smaller circles inside a bigger circle, like that. So how do I get the point of contact there? 
same way as you do when it's um when it's an external circle touching it same thing for internal cir circles i do still join the centers but i actually extend it past the center out to the edge and i do the same with this guy here extend it past and if that circle was sitting inside in that circle that would be, if my genelle extends out, that would be the point of contact out there. Then that would be the point of contact out there. Alright. Jeez, another. So we have a third sketching question. Graphic shows digital camera sh draw a well proportioned freehand sketch of the elevation of the camera viewed in the direction of our area. So this is similar to the one we had, the kind of stairs yesterday. So I have to draw an elevation of what's going on there. So. First thing I do anyway is I'll start thinking about what will I be able to see. Well, that there, the most prominent thing there I can see is that that rectangle here along the front. So I'm going to try and draw that rectangle. So look, there will be about the height of it. That distance there will be about that. And I need to get this distance right as well. Yeah, come on across there like that. Come on across there like that. Alright, and maybe... That would be enough there at that. Something like that. Alright, so there's my there's my rectangle on the front. Okay, after that, there's halfway on that. So one would that be the same as that? Probably just short. So if I get a halfway line here, something there at that. This bit, if I have that again, I'd be end up about that. That would that be the same be far off it might be just inside halfway so this line here if you imagine that line there that line there this there is maybe just slightly longer so if that was halfway I would say here it's going to be just inside it so this line is going to be something like that to the same this side just inside halfway something like that well I'd be happy enough with that okay after that with the shape here in the front is it a square it isn't quite a square so that distance there is going to be, this height going up here is going to be slightly shorter than this distance here. If I just take that size there, that distance and that distance, this is slightly shorter. So I wouldn't exactly go up that length, I'd go maybe a little bit shorter there, like, like that maybe. Alright, so I end up with this smaller rectangle inside. And I can see then that this circle this circle fits inside here and it isn't flush with the ground it's sitting off the ground so the same distance same distance find halfway across on it something like that then in from the side in from the side so try and sketch this circle here something like that put another circle inside it so Oh, light enough for my 2H. Okay, then after that, I've got this cylinder sitting at the side. It's nearly slap bang in the middle of that. This bit of a gap here. So I'll draw a line straight up there. What's the height of it? It's only barely off the ground. And then it's probably that wide there. The diameter is probably that wide, something like that. Okay, then after that, I have this kind of flash sitting up here. It's that height. So I go up maybe there, something like that. And the angle it goes right across like that. But it doesn't quite get to the end here. It's just sitting in this distance. I'm going to go up there like that. Same distance in either side. And it goes up at a bit of an angle. Something like that and that. I'd be happy enough for that. So I can start uh, to or hating it now. So I'll draw my rectangle across. Full lines if you can lads remember. If I'm not happy with it, just draw the full line again. Full line down. If I'm not happy, just go again. Okay. Draw in line here. Line here. Draw in my circle inside. Circle is going to be tough now because we're just inside that flat. Ok, 
Okay. Then I draw my little button here up the top. Okay, just like that. It's gonna look like a rectangle. And then I have my flash sitting on top. There like that. I'm happy enough for that. Do I need to um shade? I don't. Right, so there is I'd be happy enough for that. Alright. So there's my um there's my uh elevation sketched in there. Okay. Right, fifteen. Last one. We had a line graph yesterday I'd say we have a pie chart, okay? So there's twenty four tour tourists were surveyed while visiting a village in Ireland. The following were the nationalities of the tourists surveyed. Twelve were from the UK, United Kingdom, uh six were from the US, United States of America, three were from Germany, three were from France. Okay, so we've got twenty four in total. So twenty four in total, so we're talking uh twelve of twenty four is gonna be half. So we can kick off straight away anyway by getting half of this. Alright, so I'll get my vertical line here. And I'm actually just gonna draw that straight through. There's UK. So we're talking about a half. Alright. Then six. Six of twenty-four is a quarter. So to get a quarter, I need a quadrant. So how much of this am I gonna need? So a quarter of my three sixty angle, quarter of three sixty is gonna be ninety degrees, so I'm gonna need ninety degrees. I'm gonna draw that straight there like that. So there we have USA. Okay. And then Germany and France are three and three. If I imagine that's that represents six, well that's the same as that. I need three and three, so I need to find halfway on that. I need to divide this 90 degree angle into two. What is that angle? That angle is 90 degrees. You can use your set square. <coughs> you can also use your protractor. So I'll make sure that my vertex is in the middle and I line up one of the arms side. Actually, this is when I get to 45. I will. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 45. And I'll join that out there. So there is the quadrant. Divide the given circle to represent its information graphically. Now, color and shade the completed pie chart. So I'm going to label it UK, color or shade, sorry, US, Germany. France. And there's three marks going for this. Colour it neatly, lads. Try not to leave gaps. And you don't have to be leaning on it. Just make sure you get an even colour the whole lot. That's how you render something. So I'm trying to get a nice even colour in the whole lot. Right, there's that. Go blue for US. And orange for the France one. Now lads, there's one part of one question that you may or may not have spotted where I forgot to do something. Alright? 
So there's one part, so there's the end of them. So there's one part of one question that I forgot to do something that will lose me marks definitely. So uh, what have I done? Is there anything we'd normally do it in class if we were doing a question that involved this uh, shape or item? Um, we would always have to do this. And I reminded you that you needed to do this to get full marks. So what is it that I didn't do that's going to lose your marks on one of these questions? Right, so I want you to include in yours and maybe leave a private comment in the Google Classroom. Uh, leave a private comment as to what I left out. All right, so there's something in one of the questions that I left out that we always would. And I always remind you, you have to do this. If you're going to do this particular thing, you have to make sure and do something else. All right. Thanks, lads. <clears throat>